Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. We are doing this in conjunction with Ammo Land News, and we're doing a catching up video with Palmetto State Armory. We've got Josiah and Colton here joining us. Uh, remote on Skype from uh, from the Palmetto State. What's up, guys? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> good, Another good. How are you? Yeah, I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy for you. So um, in these catching up videos, the first thing we want to do, check in with companies. I'm sure folks out there want to know, how are you guys faring in this whole pandemic uh, situation that's going on here right now? Uh, so in terms of like, do you have uh, do you have workers that have that have gotten COVID? Um, you know, do you have a workforce that's not coming in? All that kind of stuff. What's going on? All right. So I'll hit, I'll hit that. Uh, so mm -hmm. we've got um, uh, our 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 office personnel, they call it. We've all been working from home. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in here today uh, just doing a, a few things. So one of these being the the, the call. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the doing the uh, interview with you, Hank. But uh, all of our office personnel, they've been working from home remotely for the past two months. Okay. I know uh, engineering, you guys were working from home a little bit. Uh, um, and uh, so all of our uh, office personnel have been working from home. A uh, few of us are coming back here and there. I'm coming in today to do this. So they're laxing up a little bit, but we've been faring extremely well. We haven't had anything, any cases where of COVID where we've had to shut down our facilities um, so we've, everything's been running a hundred percent. I mean, our sales are through the roof still, it's not stopping, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, our serialized warehouse, our assembly, um, our, uh, non-serialized warehouse has been running a hundred percent as far as the, uh, actual manufacturing DC machines, special tool solutions, they've been running full bar, full bore as well. We haven't had an issue where we've had an employee with COVID-19 where we, we've had to shut down the, uh, um, any of the facilities okay good um i did i did go to sts with you for anyone who saw that video that was all before everything got really hot and heated uh, yeah so uh, how has um the state of south carolina been with you guys any issues there not at all they've been really okay. good uh, south carolina you know they wanted you know they're like hey state i mean i don't know what the official proclamation was but it's just like hey just you know be safe, stay at, stay at home. But us being an essential business, we were allowed, you know, fire business, we were allowed to go to work. Mm -hmm. But um, my understanding is, is if you were out and about, nobody got pulled over. South Carolina is very relaxed, lean, you know, lenient state. They're not going to try and lock us down like some of the other states are, you know, pull us over, find out where we're going, need a letter saying, hey, I'm an essential worker type of deal. So we've, uh, South Carolina, um, you know, from Governor McMaster, he's like, I, I trust that our that South Carolinians are going to do the right thing. And we have those who most, you know, unless we really needed to be out, we stayed home. Mm -hmm. if we needed to go out and do something, you know, in common sense, stay at home when you can go out. We did that. We didn't have an extreme lockdown and we're doing good. OK, awesome. So what about supply chain? Um, those kinds of issues or have you guys had any issues there or, or need to like raise prices or anything? Um, as far as supply chain, um, we've had, uh, we supply ourselves with a lot of, a lot of our own products as far as ARs, um, some of the AK stuff. Uh, so, you know, as far as supply chain, um, that, uh, we supply ourselves with a lot of the actual manufacturing PSA stuff. So that really hasn't been too much of an issue. There's been more demand for it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as working supply chains of magazines, ammunition, um, you know, all the different parts and accessories, we, we, we've got really good connections with, with the companies. So we really haven't had major issues with that. We've actually opened up some areas where we're getting into surplus. We've got, um, some AK parts kits, FAL mm -hmm. parts, people starting to carry FAL magazines, get into the um, surplus market. It's actually opened it up for us because there's there's so much more. Uh, there's a lot of new shooters, a lot of people who realizing, um, I shouldn't get into politics too much, but realizing that, hey, it, you know, when at first when they were really scared, hey, if I need to defend myself, 
Um, how am I going to do that? And they realize that, hey, a gun is a useful tool mm -hmm. if the police can't get there in time. So we have a lot of new shooters. Yes, lots of people coming on board. Hopefully yeah. hopefully coming on board with the Second Amendment. I know you guys are a very pro-Second Amendment uh, company. Uh, Colton, we, we saw you at SHOT Show, man. You gave us the rundown on all, like, <laughs> PSA's doing all the flavors of AKs, pretty much. That's right. Yes, uh, people are very excited about those videos. Uh, where are we, guys, between uh, what you showed at SHOT Show and now? Uh, what's come out? Uh, what's coming out soon? So uh, we're very close uh, on several of the models that we talked about at SHOT Show. Mm -hmm. uh, so close that it's hard to say which one's going to come out first. Um, we are a few weeks out on uh, about three models, and they're all going to be separated by probably only like a week or two. They're all very, very close to production. Um, a lot of it is now, all we're waiting on is like some of the, uh, some of the last manufacturing tooling over in the assembly area. They're getting those, uh, those last uh, production, production tooling ready. And mm -hmm. we're trying to build up that inventory of parts, um, from either our internal suppliers, what, what Josiah was saying, we supply our own parts. I know here at Ferris, um, they, in the back, they have been, they've got several machines that are dedicated just to. Uh, AK parts manufacturing mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of parts like what goes on the barrel the gas block front sight base rear sight that kind of stuff um, they have dedicated several machines to that and they're just basically building up an inventory so that when we say go they're not you know a bottleneck over in production waiting on where are my parts where are my parts they want it so that when they turn it on it's just floodgates open they've got all the parts they can just build basically as fast as they can run okay um, models we've got are the GF4 the AK-74 and the AK-103, those are all three very, very close. We uh, we would have come out with the GF-4. We had to make some last uh, tweaks, we'll say, to the barrel. Okay. Uh, to recap, that is our model. It is just like our GF-3, but it is a cold hammer forge chrome line barrel. It's our in-house cold hammer forge chrome line barrel. It is kind of the one that's going to bridge the gap from the guys that... Um, you know, it, it, it carries the same internals, the same hammer forged bolt, bolt carrier and trunnion as our GF3 line that mm -hmm. has been proven. Um, but it's it's for the guy that wants a cold hammer forged chrome line barrel, a slight upgrade from the GF3, but they don't want to spend maybe the price point of the AKE to, to bounce for the uh, FN cold hammer forged chrome line barrel. So okay. it kind of fills that gap. Yeah, it's it's kind of like they right do. in between there if they want that... Uh, if they want that nice barrel, what's what difference do we get between um, the, between the barrels? Do we get better accuracy? What are we getting out of that with the chrome? A lot line? of what you get on the cold hammer forge chrome line. Some people think, a lot of people think that it's inherently going to increase their accuracy. The FM barrels have been performing really, really well. We've been really pleased with those. But on that same token, our DC, our, our standard GF3 barrels uh, made in house at DC. They are very, very accurate as well. Mm -hmm. um, what we found is that a lot of which. Okay, looks like we, looks like he froze over there for a second. Let's see if, uh, let's see if Colton, <laughs> yeah, Colton. So uh, forgive us here for one quick second. Looks like Colton's. Uh, I'm gonna try and call. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. There, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Did you press the internet you, button? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. So, um, I'm not sure what the last part was you heard, but but basically on the cold hammer forged chrome line, um, it's it's not inherently just some some precision bolt action long range barrel mm -hmm. type accuracy, but it, what you do gain is better battle longevity, better uh, heat okay. resistance, heat resilience in okay. long strings of fire. Um, the it's it's just more it's battle proven. You know, it's it's a better blend of steel. Okay, so let's say like you're in a, in a very humid state, like uh, here in Florida, I'm sure South Carolina for that matter. Um, yeah. you, you, it'll probably last a little bit longer with less maintenance kind of a deal? Yeah, um, okay. the, the, the chrome is very resilient. Uh, it's very resistant to corrosion and, and rust and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Our other barrels are also that way as well. They are salt bath nitrided. Okay. So they're, they're very you know, resistant to the elements as well. Yeah. Uh, so you, it's it's kind of just a. It's a it's thing a to some AK some guys. Some like yeah. Some, right. Some people like nitride. The more modern coating is the nitride. Mm -hmm. uh, that that's, uh, it's it's a developed, uh, process that wasn't around in the original mm -hmm. AK days. Mm -hmm. Back then they had 
chrome lining, and that's what helped the barrel be resistant to corrosion from you know the, the com block corrosive ammo that they mm -hmm. used. That was the coating they used. Uh, the nitride is much more modern coating. Um, it's it's actually a harder coating, but mm -hmm. you have your know, traditional guys that you know old school AKs. They were yep. forged barrels, chrome line, so that's what guys want. Yeah, yeah. This this is a thing that only if you're into AKs you understand this. If you're in deep, like a lot, a lot of us are into AKs, but we don't. But there are guys who want it a specific way. So, and then there's guys who do want upgrades and things like that to it. Like I'm in the upgrade camp. It doesn't need to be exactly like it was. I like technology, right? That's right. Yeah. There you go. So you said you've got three of them you're working on. The other one I think uh, that I remember right now you said is the AK-74. That's about to come out. That's right. Okay. So I don't have a GF4 here in front of me. It it okay. basically looks just like a GF3. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a different barrel material. Mm -hmm. What I do have here uh, is one of our first AK-74 models. All right. This is actually a, a production one that we mm -hmm. are running through the paces. Okay. We're actually in the last phase of that right now. Like I said, we're trying to build up inventory of parts to actually begin like a full production run of these. Mm -hmm. We're also taking the first limited run that we did in a production setting and we are uh, doing the longevity testing on them, the endurance testing on them, uh, beating on them, running them, getting them really hot, running a lot of rounds and then doing mm -hmm. accuracy checks to make sure they're holding up uh, headspace and, and the rifling's holding up. Okay. So let's those, take a closer look at that if you could hold that up in front of the camera here so we could, all the AK-74 guys like me. That's yeah, right. See if I can get it, the lights seem yeah. to be kind of blinding it out a little bit in the yeah, background. a little bit. Okay. So this is going to have uh, some Magpul furniture on it? Uh... Yeah, we'll have a couple different models. We'll okay. have the classic uh, classic polymer furniture. We'll mm -hmm. also obviously uh, carry a lot of Magpul mm -hmm. stuff. AKs, a lot of our models are OEM with Magpul. Mm -hmm. So that will be no different on the AK-74. They take the same furniture mm -hmm. uh, as our regular uh, GF3s. Yeah. Um, difference you'll see a lot of them will <laughs> – I'll say a lot of them. The difference you'll see to a 74, you have different gas block, different front sight base with the correct muzzle device. We will also have cleaning rods. For everybody who's been asking for cleaning rods, we'll okay. have those because mm -hmm. that is one thing that just, it does not look complete on one of these models without a cleaning rod under the bottom. It looks like mm -hmm. something's missing. Right. So we'll have that. And of course, uh, 545 by 39 caliber, same proven internals. These, um, these will get our upgraded com block plus. Uh, 4340 material mm -hmm. uh, straight from the beginning. I know our, our GF3s, we were the traditional 4140, and then we offered the enhanced versions with 4340. Mm -hmm. These will start right out of the gates with 4340. Okay. Um, Just we, we've seen, we didn't have any, we had no issues with the 4140. It actually performed very well, but the 4340 was kind of like that, just that next level. It, it, it performed amazingly, amazingly well in, in, the, in the trials that we did on it. And okay. it, uh, on paper, it said that it should have. It's 71% stronger so uh, on its yield strength. So it, it, it made sense that it, that it performed better, but it actually did produce those results when we tested it. it. It was amazing. So we just decided to make that blanket change across the board. And so it's, it's getting a 4340 right out of the gates. Okay, very good. If we miss any questions that people have here, um, we'll, we'll try to get PSA to come in and answer some questions here on the video or on uh, Ammo Land News for that matter. So uh, features of this, what I can think of right now, are we just getting standard triggers? Are we getting some trigger options? So we'll have a few options. We'll have different models. Uh, obviously, we'll have our standard, our standard trigger, which is actually very nice. It's a very nice trigger. We get a lot of people compliment that uh, a lot. That. Mm our straight you know factory plain jane trigger does really really well it's got a really clean crisp break on it mm -hmm. we will also have models with the algs okay so okay again that'll just be the different different tiers of do you get the basic one with the classic poly you get the little bit enhanced one with magpul or you get the really enhanced one with either magpul and alg or the aluminum picatinny railed uh, handguards with alg that kind of stuff just okay. different different tiers Okay, cool. What about um, mounting options? Uh, are there is this side mounting? Do you have other mounting options available here? Can you take a look at that? We've got, yeah, we've got uh, just a regular side rail. Oh, okay. Same thing. Same thing on our GF3s. Oh, cool. We okay. Actually, we recently changed the uh, went with the the Russian spec on that too. So guys, there was a little more, uh, we'll say, 
modularity or I guess compatibility is I guess is mm-hmm. the better word. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the mounts we tested them with like Midwest Industries and RS Regulate. Those are your industry standard mounts. Yeah. There are a few others that are very good also, but those are kind of yeah. like the industry standard. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm especially a fan of the RS Regulate out there. Midwest yeah. Industry also makes good stuff without a doubt. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what we had was the rail we had would it was on the smaller end of what mm-hmm. would take those. You you could fit those rails on it, but a lot of times you would almost bottom out the adjustment, mm-hmm. getting it to clamp down. So we changed that spec recently a lot. I know there was a lot of debate on that one on some of the forums about what size spec we went with. We did change that over to a uh, Russian spec, so it is now a little wider. So it kind of it'll fit those mounts, but they'll be kind of more in the the mid range of their adjustment, not bottomed all the way out. Mm-hmm. So I think that'll make a lot of people happy. Okay, and then um, if I can, uh, let me see here. What's my uh, the the other thing that I wanted to know? I know you're coming out with a crank at some point, right? That's right. Okay, so with this one, are there going to be any options here? Are we going to have pistol, shorter barrel, or you're going to wait really for that for when you come out with the crank itself? So I don't think we're going to do an AKP per se, Mm -hmm. like a a non-crank pistol. Yeah. I'm glad you asked that because I've Uh got its baby brother right here beside me. Right, there he goes. That's That's my baby. Take care of my baby right there. <laughs> that one, it'll follow, uh, we're probably about a quarter or so from the time the 74, the full size 74 releases, mm-hmm. about another quarter beyond that to get the uh, the pistol to crank up. Uh-huh. So, and really a lot of that we're waiting on for that is just uh, to build up a supply. This It'll have the correct top cover with rear sight, the hinges, um, stamped cover. It won't be our billet Picatinny rail version. Okay. Yep. So we're having to have... The crank off takes special furniture. Mm-hmm. It is not compatible. It, it got its own custom short furniture, so it is not compatible with anything that Magpul offered. We're actually working with a company to have that made specially for us because it seems like nobody actually makes um, crank off furniture other than, you know, if you find it like on KVAR or something like that, hmm. and they're really expensive, but they're just kind of a they're like an online retailer for parts. They're not really an OEM, so we right. had to establish an OEM to make that furniture for us. Yeah. That was a challenge. So for even so even um, in, even Krinkov guys out there could probably get some furniture eventually, maybe. Or this is just going to be exclusively for for the crank when you guys make it. So when they first come out, obviously we'll be trying to uh, supply our own uh, our own uh, supply line, I guess, mm-hmm. our own assembly. Um, but once once we kind of build that supply up a little bit, I'm sure we'll break off some and, and put it in maybe. Maybe through the PSA Custom Series, mm-hmm. uh, put it in some some retail packaging where guys can buy it individually and not have to buy it on the. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. So I know one of the interesting things, and Josiah and I have discussed this before. You guys actually pay a lot of attention to the forums. I mean, we could hear you talking about it. Uh, these are actually AK guys. <laughs> You know, you could tell when you're when you're talking to people. One of the things I like about PSA, there's guys that working on stuff that are into those things. Um, so you've you've paid a lot of attention here. I'm taking it to what the folks are saying on the forums and what they're looking for. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's, uh, that's Josiah there. That's that's a lot yeah. of what a lot of what he does. He spends a lot of time yeah. on there. Yeah, and yeah, I know that's not easy, Josiah. Yeah, it's not always easy, but it's a good yeah. good way to um, deal directly with the customers. And yes, we pay attention to what they want to what they want. We can't always give them everything, um, mm-hmm. but we do what what's within our power to give them as much of what the authentic thing uh, authentic whether it's the crank the 74 um now with the gf4 um they they wanted a cold hammer forged barrel we gave it to them Mm -hmm. they wanted forged trunnions we gave them forged trunnions so it's listening to those guys on forums whether it be ak files whether it be AR15.com, you know, even on AR15.com, there's a lot of guys who are into AKs. They have an AK47 mm-hmm. section. So yes, we're giving them the what, what they want, and we are listening to them. Yeah, and of so course. That's a lot of what we want people to know too. That when they when they speak up and, and throw stuff like that out there, it's not falling on deaf ears. You know, mm-hmm. we we hear that. In fact, uh, we've got a little teaser here. We've got another model coming out that's going to be kind of in the middle that we haven't even Uh-oh. haven't even uh, announced yet. Do we get to see it? Uh, no, I actually no. don't have the prototype no. here. Okay. It's over with. Uh, we can't the overload. Content. We can't overload the people. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's yeah. kind of an intermediate thing where a lot of guys said, "Hey, I love your AKP," 
but I would love a version that had just a standard Picatinny, I mean, a, a standard stamp dust cover, mm-hmm. not Picatinny, the elevated billet with the Picatinny rail. So we heard you. We listened to that part, and uh, we got that coming out here shortly oh. also. Cool, cool. I look forward to when we start seeing some meme AKs from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be... Huh? No, I was going to say one thing uh, along with listening. Uh, a lot of times um, it comes across and people are just like, hey, um, we would like this. And I and I tell the guys, hey, I'm, I'll send it up the chain, and, um, chain of command. And when I and every time I say that, I literally mean that. Um, a, anytime somebody makes a request, whether it be something small, large, whatever, uh, whatever the request is, I send it up. Uh, my brother's the, the CEO of the corporation, and he and I we, we talk, and I send it up through the CEO of PSA Chad. I anytime I say I'm going to send it up, I send it up the chain of command, and they listen. Yeah, that's great. I've, I, I can um, I can verify that for anyone if you don't believe. It. Oh oh oh. We get, so we get I don't know if here. you can see it. I'll try and hold it up to the camera. This was the prototype that's with the media team right now, taking some teaser pictures oh, of it. Oh, there you go. Oh, sexy. It's uh, it's more along the lines of like an AK-104 series. Um, yeah. So you guys gonna be doing? You guys gonna be doing some Bakelite furniture? <laughs> Working on that too. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Picked up on that. Working on some uh, okay, similar, some similar yeah. uh, okay. material. It won't be true bakelite material because that stuff is yeah, kind of a, a caustic. Yeah, I guess. there's a reason why. There's a reason why it's in the past. That's right. That's but it right. looks but good. It, it looks good. It's a good visually, color. It will, it will have the same visual appeal. It'll look just like that material. Oh, very cool. Very cool here. So of course you're always going to have your AK guys to say if an AK is made in America, it's not. You know, but me personally, I'm happy to have my AK made here. You know, even though it doesn't have that uh, that authentic uh, com block, you know, uh, scent on it or whatever. I mean, you're getting benefits out of it. What about before we move on? Because I think we just covered covered two of the AKs you were talking about. Before we move on from the AK74, what about ammo supplies? Are people going to be able to get that AK74 ammo from you guys or 545 by 39? They are. Uh, okay. That was we discussed that kind of early on, uh, mm-hmm. about a year ago actually, when we first started getting really deep into the design of it. Mm-hmm. We stopped and said, you know what? Nobody really supplies this in big numbers, and it's one of those. Uh, it's kind of like that chicken and egg scenario. Mm-hmm. Ammo companies they don't mind making it. We've been in in talks with some of them about it. They don't mind making it, but they needed somebody to actually be producing rifles that took it before they dedicated resources. Really? Okay. You had companies saying, well, I don't want to dedicate resources to make the rifle if nobody's going to make the ammo. Mm-hmm. So we just kind of, we had to be the, uh, the initiator, I guess the uh, catalyst in that to start producing the guns. And that got some companies interested in making more ammo. We did in, in the meantime, companies that traditionally make it like uh, Tula and Wolf and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, ordered significant quantities of that to okay. stocks when we actually launch the rifle you'll be able to buy something to feed it yeah because i know so for example i have an ak-74 bullpup right and i have mm-hmm. those big green cans that I, I i only have one left i'm not opening it <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of scarce you know That's getting right. my hands on uh ak-74 ammo i know there's uh different companies out there like i was recently talking to the guys from barnall Barnall makes some uh, AK-74 stuff um, out there for people, but I know it would be good to be able to get it from you guys and, and get a good price on it, you know, in the meanwhile. So what was the that's other AK? I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, that's our plan. One-stop yeah. shop. Rifle and ammo right here and mags. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, oh, mags too. Yeah, that's very good. Are you guys going to make the mags or are you going to have the mags? From we will have our own mags. Mm-hmm. Uh, eventually. Okay. Uh, they will not be ready quite in time for the launch, mm-hmm. but Magpul does make an AK-74 mag. Okay. That so far in all the testing, we've had you know great results. It's typical Magpul products. Okay. It's a great product. Um, and we do a lot with Magpul. So just like our GF3s, they all will ship with a Magpul mag. Mm-hmm. Same with the AK-74s. In the beginning, they will all ship with a Magpul okay. AK-74 mag, and then eventually once ours come in. We'll kind of have that option. You'll have the, the models that maybe they take Magpul furniture, they get a Magpul mag. Mm-hmm. They take classic poly or, or wood or something like that, they'll get one of our mags that will have the mold pattern. Those are the ones that will look similar to the big lights. Oh, okay. Very good. So what was the, which was the AK that we missed out here? I think we only went over in detail two of them, right? 
So, yep, the, the three that are coming all really close to each other, you have the GF4 mm -hmm. that we we spoke about the uh, AK-74 that we just talked about. The Krinkov will be in there a little bit later. The mm -hmm. one that's coming really soon, uh, it'll be probably right after the AK-74, but before the Krinkov is going to be the AK-103. Okay. So that is, um, obviously a lot of the AK, AK guys know this, uh, It it is, it's a 7.62 caliber at AK-74 is a good way to think about it. It's a... Uh, it took some of the advantages of the AK-74 and went back and uh, added the 7.62 caliber offering to that, okay. and that was what was AK-103. And I could, I don't think I have one here in mm -hmm. front of me, but I'll show you this again. They look just like an AK-74 on the outside. Okay. Uh, very, very few distinguishing characteristics okay. between them, uh, externally, just aesthetically speaking. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of guys, the only way they, if you just look at the profile of one and you had to pick which one's the AK-74, which one's the 103, a lot of times the only way you can truly tell that by looking at a, a profile picture of it is the curvature of the magazine. That's about it. Because okay. every part of it looks identical. So does, does that wind up being a soft shoot? Because I don't know, may, this is like my opinion, the AK-74 comes in a little softer shooting. Does that somehow, that des design make it softer shooting? It is. It, okay. it does carry over. The 103 is a softer shooting version of your mm -hmm. traditional AK-74. Mm -hmm. A lot of the reason for that, one of the biggest contributing factors for that is this brake that was developed right. for the 74. It's a very effective brake. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it does a lot to reduce recoil, and mm -hmm. it reduces muzzle flip. Yeah, and a lot so of people have copied... Shooter. Right, exactly. I think a lot of people have even copied off of that style in other uh, muzzle brakes you see out there for other guns like 308s and stuff like that there's people copying off that old style okay awesome yeah. um uh, so availabilities on these i know you said that it, like you can't pin it down to exact dates but we're a couple weeks away we are we uh weeks to maybe a month or so okay. from the first one dropping uh, like i mm -hmm. said a lot of right now the the design and and all that is done mm -hmm. uh, the testing uh, the last testing that's being done is the testing of the production models. We're, mm -hmm. we're done with all of our prototype and pilot runs. Um, we're just making sure that the, the first small batch that the guys ran, kind of hands-free, no engineering support, make, making sure those shoot good, mm -hmm. uh, making sure they hold up. And during that time while we're kind of torturing these guns, uh, that's, that's when it gives our production team, our parts production team, time to catch up and get their supply up to feed the uh, assembly team. Yeah, if you need a if you need a tester, I know a guy. <laughs> How's well, you, you can give us a hand. <laughs> uh, a lot of rounds of these things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I, I won't mind coming up there and helping you guys shoot some ammo. <laughs> um, so, and prices and everything are still in line, price wise. It's um, I can't remember exact prices we were talking about, but yeah, uh, a lot of the, the the prices that we discussed at shot are gonna. Nothing has really impacted those those prices at all, so we're still looking GF uh, four. What did we discuss on that? I want to say seven ninety nine. Does that sound right, Josiah? It does. Yeah, I think so. Seven ninety nine on that, mm -hmm. and then the seventy fours, AK seventy fours will be very closely priced to our GF threes. Hmm. Uh, maybe there's a few other features they have, such as obviously cleaning rod, muzzle brake, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, they'll be say within fifty bucks or so for you know similar models up to tiers. I think as as what we discussed, that nothing's changed that though. Yeah, absolutely. So just uh, so before we end this here, uh, Josiah, or or you can do it also. What um, like if folks out there are very interested in this, what's the best way for them to make sure, you know, they're gonna get the first chance at, at these things? I think uh, the take a look at the website. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we're going to be. Uh, days a couple a few days before um we'll be putting the uh that the actual product listing on the website mm -hmm. um just keep looking at keep looking at the website when you see that product listing just uh keep refreshing your page oh, okay um, okay so there's no email list or anything for this one no, there's no email list or okay. a pre-order or anything like that okay um we uh keep, we also have a blog on our website, and if you click on that, on the very bottom of the website, click on the blog. Um, I monitor the comments on the blog, and um, so I'd say the first way is keep t looking at the website. Secondly, is t 
take a look at that blog. Just the bottom of the website, click on the blog button. And uh, as soon as I get solid information as far as when something's going to be released, be like, hey, guys, within a week, X is going to be released. I'm going to let you know. Okay, awesome. And a lot of what you'll see, too, uh, for guys that follow our Instagram or Facebook, if something's about to drop, you'll generally see some teaser clues coming. Uh, we'll yeah. post some pictures and just say, hey, look what we found it in the production flow today. You know, something like that. It'll give you a heads up a couple days in advance. Once you start seeing that on some of the social media uh, pages, that's when you know uh, if you're subscribed to the emails, mm -hmm. the day it drops, it'll obviously be the highlighted top top item on the daily daily mm -hmm. deal email list. Yeah. And it'll say, now in stock. So that's a good way. It's, it's kind of one of those sort of like Easter egg clues. Oh, yeah. they mentioned it on Instagram. They mentioned it on Facebook. Yeah. Now I'm going to watch my emails. Oh, there it is. Yeah, these so, guys do a lot of teasing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, but listen, if if you don't get it in that first wave, I know that PSA is uh, very adept at manufacturing here, and whatever they see is very popular with folks out there. You're going to manufacture as many of those as you can get to people, right? That's right. Yeah, okay. That's That, again, is what I mentioned about we didn't want to just – have 30 sets of something available and we launch 30 and now it's going to be two months before we could have any more. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do in advance. We're taking advantage of this opportunity when we're running them through their paces. We're actually having the production team make sure they have a supply of parts built up so that, you know, we're going to make them. I'm sure they'll sell out in the beginning. We'll be able to make another run, you know, right on its heels. Okay. Awesome. Colton, uh, Josiah, I'm sorry, Josiah, did you have something to add to that? Oh, it's good. I was just going to mention mention one thing um, as far as new release too. Mm -hmm. In Q3, um, we are releasing our AK103 mags for 7.62 by 39. And Colton, wasn't there one other type of magazine that we're uh, AK74, the AK103, and wasn't there one other? Uh, I think that's it for right now because that that covers your 545 and your 7.62 style. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those two, yeah, so we are going to be releasing the AK-103 magazine as well, okay. our PSA branded one, not, and and sending out our rifles with uh, with our own PSA branded magazine. Okay, very cool. So keep keep an eye open for that. I'm sure you'll there'll be um, uh, like a, a value added price involved in that situation. Yes, yeah, just like, yep, like with the AKV, we'll be uh, selling a ton of mags separately. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to stock up, stack up on those. All right, great. Is there anything else, guys, that maybe we missed out here or, or FAQs from uh, folks that you've been seeing on the AKs before we go? I think that, that pretty much was a, a good quick uh, quick and dirty uh, yeah. quick, up, quick update on everything. Yeah, here, here's what I'll do on my part. Um, when we've actually got these out there, I'll try to get some more info out to you guys. If we have to have, uh, like, Colton come back on or Josiah or someone like that, we'll do it either here on the podcast or somewhere else and keep you guys updated with that. Uh, so thanks a lot, Colton. Thanks a lot, Josiah. Um, make sure you guys uh, read the article on MLN News. Check out the video as well. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you can be notified every time we post a video here. And on behalf of myself and these guys, thanks very much. Any uh, last Last uh, comments from you guys before we go? No, they've done everything. They've given it all, right. all to you. They've given it. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. See ya. Bye. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.